Being productive is always a challenging task. Especially when you are using a IDE, it is much more challenging because you will be already breaking your head in designing something or debugging something. Upon that, you will have to have the necessary plugins installed inside the IDE in order to make you more productive. Let's see three different plugins which will increase your productivity while debugging or coding inside IntelliJ IDEA. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. The first one is called the Maven Helper plugin. If you need to analyze the Maven dependencies, how do you generally do it? I used to use Maven dependency tree, so if you are in a project, let's say this is a sample project, so this is the project which we did yesterday. I have a HTTPS example project. If I need to identify the Maven dependencies in this particular project, I do a Maven dependency tree. Most often what happens is, it is very tedious when you are working in a very big project. There are too many dependencies and you won't know which dependency is under what because the graphical interface of this Maven dependency tree command is not great because it just shows up in the command line interface and it is too much for us. And finally, the output looks like this. It is very complex, right? Because in order to understand what is under what, it takes a while and you can't search that easily and it is not visually compelling. And you can't even like minimize or maximize or whatever. So Maven helper plugin solves this problem. I'll show you how Maven helper plugin looks like. So if I'm in a pom.xml file, now you can see a new tab called dependency analyzer. If I click on this dependency analyzer, this is going to show me all the dependencies here. If you see here, this is a Spring Boot application. I by default have a Spring Boot starter web. Under the starter web, there is a Hibernate validator. Once I click on the Hibernate validator, it shows up in the right side who was dependent or because of which of the dependency this guy was brought. So that way, when you are in a huge set where you are under a tree, you can easily identify watch what is the parent jar. Additionally, under the Hibernate, we have the classmate, JBoss login, and you can see that the navigation just grows on. The green ones here denotes the tests. So these are the test dependencies. If there is a dependency which is mentioned with the scope as test, then obviously those will be mentioned as green because these won't be packaged. So you can easily identify what is test and what is getting packaged. See here, right? The spring beans. If I click on spring beans, you can see the different projects which are bringing in spring beans. So that way you can easily identify what versions are present in your project and what versions are coming in. So this is a very good tool when you have a multi-module project and it is completely huge if it is monolith. It is very good when you are analyzing jar dependencies, when you introduce a new jar, there could be some problems. When you are upgrading a version from one version to another, that's where all these problems come in. So that will be helpful when you are using the dependency analyzer. So use the Maven helper plugin i'll just show you how what is the name of the plugin just go to the settings go to plugins and search for maven helper plugin if you go to the browser repositories you will be able to find it so this is how the plugin looks like so right now if you see the version is version 3.6.172 and i think they have like 2 lakh or more downloads and there are uh, instructions on what you can do right click on uh, right click on the maven and there are lots of other um, options for you to customize this particular plugin so you can take a look at that and then use it so that is the maven helper plugin which is helpful in order to identify the dependencies and it can analyze the dependencies inside your pom and we can see that graphically in fact you can even search for your dependency see that right if i just type json it just shows what are the dependencies which are coming up with json so yeah so that's how you can leverage this particular plugin in order to debug and be more productive the next one is sonar lint sonar lint is helpful when you want to identify sonar issues right when you code let's take a sample file 
I have a sample file and let's say I have a huge file and I started writing some variables and then I forgot to remove those variables or I forgot to assign some variables right how do I identify that there is the sonar violation to remove this right when I code so that is when sonar lint is going to help me I already have installed sonar lint if you see here automatically the sonar lint is showing me that this particular variable is unused so let's try removing this and I'll show you how sonar lint works by default I have enabled it as automatic so if you see here it, it went off so whenever the file gets saved so this gets scanned so whenever I just say save the scan happens and immediately sonar lint identifies this issue and pops it up for you so right now it's not immediate right so let me run this if I click on run option it will just immediately run the sonar lint let's do a run here I think this is because I made it as protected let's make it as private because protected if you are having a variable as protected there are chances that the subclasses could be using it so that is why sonar lint did not show that as an error but if I make it as private see that automatically sonar lint has found that this should be removed because it is not used same way if I'm adding let's say a two string so now sonar lint is going to again analyze my file and it is going to throw me an exception saying it's already a string why are you again doing a two string so which is not even required see two strings should never be used or called on a string object so these are some things which will be helpful when you want to identify bugs or violations when you are coding right away in your IntelliJ so this is another productive tool or plugin which is useful when you are coding and you want to identify issues right when you code so how can you download it so you can go to plugins and search for sonar lint so this is the sonar lint plugin if you see i have not updated my sonar lint uh, version but you can install sonar lint and by default sonar lint will show up here and if you want to analyze you can enable automatic analysis or you can disable it by default i have enabled and enabled it and if you want to manually run it you can just right click and there is an option here analyze with sonar lint you can use this particular option to run ad hocly on a particular file so that is how sonar lint works the next productive plugin is the spring assist i'm not sure if you have heard of that particular plugin i got to know very recently i used to see people using property files and intellij used to suggest the property files they intellij used to suggest the properties automatically but i thought that it is a ultimate edition specific feature but i never knew that it was a plugin so recently i got to know that that is a plugin and i have been using it for a while so i'll show you how it looks like right let me create a application yaml so now that i'm in an application yaml if you see in the application properties i have some properties here i had to remember these properties in order to make sure that i'm typing the right properties but you don't have to do that anymore because i'm using the spring assist plugin let's see how that helps right now i want to assign a port to my spring boot application so when i start typing server spring boot says that the property server it's configured to a file called server properties that way you can easily identify what are the different properties in your project and spring automatically detects these and intellij spring assist plugin helps you in identifying and typing the right stuff now under this under the server if i don't know what is there i'll just say if you see here i just started typing p and it says that it's a server port so i can just say what is the server port now so i want to use 8443 now same way if i want to do for ssl it automatically suggested if you see and under ssl if i just say i want to know what are the different stuffs which are there i'll just say ssl.key so it will be like you have to press a tab because it is under that that is how it intellij knows that okay it is server dot ssl dot key in fact that is the yaml notation so once i press tab and when i type the key you see that intellij is now suggesting all the different types of properties which are under the server dot ssl so that way you can easily press them and then you can just start using them it's very productive so you don't have to type stuff you don't have to remember the properties in fact it makes you lazy 
because everything comes inside the id you need to just keep uh, keep remembering the start of the property and then you ju you just know that intellij is going to keep the properties in its cache and then it is just going to give it for you so this is a very good way of using properties so the plugin is installable from here it's called spring assist see this is the one it shows up with a gif as well see that right it's called spring assist plugin you can go to the browse repositories option and you should be able to get that from here see here this is the one so you can get the latest version i think it has already one lakh uh, downloads i think what 12000 downloads so this is the most underrated plugin yeah even i didn't know about this plugin i recently got to know and it is pretty helpful when you are adding properties and you are modifying properties it scans your project and it identifies what are the different properties and it just suggests you what are those those are the three different plugins which are very productive there are lots of other plugins which are like very productive but i felt that these are the three common ones which we will be using because most of the time we go and change the properties we go and check the maven dependencies and also we go and check the violations when we write a program i hope you found it interesting if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.